and biologists this session where we're going to take a look at how oxygen and carbon dioxide are transported around the body so this is the Bohr effect and fetal hemoglobin so we should know that hemoglobin binds to oxygen in the lungs to form oxyhemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin will dissociate in tissues to form oxygen and hemoglobin again now the oxygen is used in aerobic respiration in the respiring tissues to create atp now, we also need to know about this graph here, which is an oxygen, oxygen dissociation curve. So normally what happens is I've got four heme groups within my hemoglobin. When the first oxygen binds to my hemoglobin, it changes the shape of hemoglobin slightly, making it easier for two more oxygens to bind. However, that fourth one is a little bit of a push sometimes to squeeze into the hemoglobin, which is why I don't quite reach 100% saturation. But it also... It enables this S curve, if you like, because I do get a lot of dis, um, a lot of oxyhemoglobin dissociating here in the, the muscles or the spine tissues to release the oxygen available for aerobic respiration. Now, carbon dioxide is transported 5% in the plasma, 10% is bound directly with hemoglobin to form carbamine hemoglobin, and yes, you do need to know that, and 85% of it, for, it forms uh, hydrocarbonate ions, and yes, you do need to know how hydrocarbonate ions are formed. So let's go through that now. So in this image, you can see carbon dioxide diffuses from the cells in my body where it's been produced from aerobic respiration diffuses into the red blood cells and binds with water using an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid. Now carbonic acid will then dissociate into hydrogen ions and hydrocarbonate ions. These hydrocarbonate ions is how 85% of carbon dioxide is transported around the body and that will diffuse out of my red blood cell. Now because this is a negative ion, chloride ions will shift in in on what's also known as the chloride shift to balance out that negative charge. Now, if you get a question asking you how do hydrocarbonate ions form, you can literally draw out these formulas here. As uh, so long as it's clear, and you might need to add in some terms, such as, for example, the key enzyme involved, such as carbonic acid and the word dissociates. But if you've got all that in and those key terminology there, you're going to pick up all the marks. So sometimes you don't need to write a big essay. Sometimes you can just draw things out and you'll get the marks a lot easier. Now, this bottom bit here is more to do with the Bohr effect. So because I have hydrogen ions present within my blood, that can have a really bad impact because if you're a chemist, you'll know this a little bit more detail, but hydrogen ions are present within acidic solutions and I do not want acidic blood. It is not good. So what happens here is hemoglobin acts as a buffer to bind to hydrogen ions to form hemoglobinic acid. And yes, you do need to know that as well. Now, because hemoglobin or HB is hemoglobin here, because hemoglobin is needed to act as a buffer, what we have here is we have oxyhemoglobin dissociating. So to form oxygen, which is used for aerobic respiration, and the hemoglobin that acts as a buffer. Now, because I need more hemoglobin to act as a buffer because I have more hydrogen ions due to the carbon dioxide, this means I'm going to have more dissociation of my oxyhemoglobin. So therefore, if I have more carbon dioxide, which is normally a result from more aerobic respiration occurring. It means I'm going to have more dissociation of my oxyhemoglobin to form and, and allow more oxygen to be available for respiring tissues, which is a good thing. Now, this uh, here is a description of that. If you want to pause the video and have a go at, at just reading through, through that, you will welcome. But what happens is we get this um, shift in the curve. So bore, if you think of the word bore, bore ends in an R. So the curve shifts to the right under high concentrations of carbon dioxide. And again, that is due to carbon dioxide changing the hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. Now, affinity basically means attraction for oxygen. So carbon dioxide changes the shape of hemoglobin. Therefore, hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen is reduced. Therefore, there is more dissociation of oxyhemoglobin. Therefore, more oxygen is available for respiring tissues because hemoglobin has to act as that buffer by binding to hydrogen ions, forming hemoglobinic acid. But also, if you remember back to how carbon dioxide was transported, hemoglobin also binds to carbon dioxide to form carbamino hemoglobin. So I do need that oxyhemoglobin to dissociate to allow the hemoglobin to do these different things. 
Now, fetal hemoglobin. If fetal hemoglobin, fetal ends in an L, so I get a shift to the left. Now, fetal hemoglobin works by taking the oxygen from the mother's or adult hemoglobin. Now, fetal hemoglobin has a higher affinity for oxygen than the adult hemoglobin. It's really important to use a comparable statement here and use ER, higher affinity for oxygen. Therefore, the fetal hemoglobin can take the oxygen at a low partial pressure, so a low oxygen concentration. Now, we need to remember here that obviously the placenta, which is where the fetus is going to be getting its oxygen from, the placenta has a very low partial pressure of oxygen. And that is because the blood in the mother has normally gone to other tissues first before it gets to the placenta. So the, the blood that does arrive at the placenta is normally under very low partial pressure of oxygen. But here, at this low partial pressure of oxygen, the adult oxyhemoglobin will dissociate. So when you're talking about fetal hemoglobin, first of all, make sure you're using comparable statements. And second of all, make sure that you're using, you're really key, key, um, clear about which term you're using. Is it adult or is it fetal hemoglobin? So that's everything we need to know. I've got some exam questions here for you to have a go at. So the first one there, if you want to pause it and have a go, just remember you can use... Um, formula to help with your descriptions here so pause that and have a go so with the fetal hemoglobin this is what we need to know again here's some formula if you needed to and the next question we want to pause that and have a go underline and highlight what you're talking about it's asking us to describe so describe we need detail of how hydrocarbon ions are produced produced i'll be highlighting that word as well Okay, and here's the mount scheme. So just have a look here and um, look at this. If you've written out this bit here as a formula, you get marking points two and four, which is like the majority of the marks. So if you just put that in and then said, oh, look, carbonic anhydrase catalyzes this reaction, full marks. So really do encourage you to use formula to help you with your answers because it'll just speed up the process and show the examiner you can get all the marks dead quick. And the last one, you want to pause this and have a go again underlining and highlights an explanation you want to know why reasonings why here and the math scheme is here so guys good luck with your exams all the best use as much scientific terminology as possible and where possible use formula to help with your answers guys good luck and all the best